in it. <laughs> now, Madam Deputy Speaker, I wish I could report from this debate that Her Majesty's opposition was clearly reflecting on the result of the election and the messages sent to them ever so politely by the British public. I wish I could tell you, Madam Deputy Speaker, that they were approaching this subject with humility and an open mind, asking themselves if there was anything in their presentation before early May that perhaps they should revise. But sadly, Madam Deputy Speaker, it was not to be. We heard Groundhog Day of the Labour story. All we heard all we heard from the benches opposite was an endless series of increasingly hysterical attacks on cuts in public spending. Now, I have a lot of time for the Honourable Gentleman, my opponent. Uh, I believe he is a good and thoughtful man and was a good and thoughtful minister in his time. But he can tell his colleagues of why those cuts in public spending yes. were necessary. Yes. My right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, did spend quite a lot of the last six to eight weeks opening his breast pocket, no, I won't give way, opening his breast pocket and brandishing a letter. Not this letter, there is nothing on it. It was from the honourable gentleman and he said that there was no money left. We have never wanted to cut public spending. We have never wanted to impose those difficult decisions. We have done so because of the legacy that he left us, that he made fun of in a letter, and we are living with those consequences. I will not give way. He has had his go. We heard from those benches opposite, Madam Deputy Speaker, barely a word about qualifications reform. We heard from them barely a word about our apprenticeship reforms that are putting employers in charge of developing the standards and in controlling government investment in apprenticeship. Did you forget to say something? If the Honourable Gentleman wishes to give way, he will give way. It is not for others to tell him to give way. He's not giving way. Minister. Deputy Speaker, if I may make clear, I would of course be happy to give way to a backbencher, but I think we can all agree that we've heard quite enough from the Right Honourable Gentleman this week in his not-so-pithy contributions to our debates.